Well, it turns out I've actually been doing street photography for nearly five flipping years. I'm actually I'm quite gobsmacked about it. Actually, I was talking to a guy in a workshop the other day and I just looked at my old videos to see how long ago it was my first ever street photography video was. And it's I mean, a long time ago. Now that video, don't watch it, it's just crap. <laughs> that video, it was literally the first time I ever went and did any street photography. So I know how long I've other than holiday snaps, which if you think about it, that's street photography as well when you go on holiday. Um, yeah, so it's, it's been a long time. So I thought, well, I was talking to this guy in a workshop and I was kind of talking about what I've learned in the four slash five years I've been a street photographer. Now, I'd definitely say that in the last two years, three years, I've become way more passionate about street photography. So I've taken it a lot more seriously and that, that's, a, that's a massive factor. In this video though, I wanna to talk to you about what I think is actually the key to be, especially if you're a beginner, if you're new to street photography or even if you're new to photography, um, this is basically what really kicked my street photography up the arse. So yeah, let's get cracking. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna to need to do is if you're assuming you know how to take a photograph, you've hit the streets, you've come back and you're looking through the photographs, and if they're crap, right, just accept that they're crap, honestly. I know that doesn't sound very nice me saying that, but it's a really important lesson to learn and it's a really, really important pill to be able to swallow. And there's a lot of photographers that have been professional for 10 years that still can't see a crap image when they take one. And it's a really, really important thing uh, to, to be able to know so that you can build on it because if you if you can if you can see a mistake if you can see an honest mistake or a fault or whatever it might be a technical thing it might be the shutter speed was wrong it might be the misfocus it might be the, the the picture isn't interesting it might be that there was no you know it's, it's a pointless image or you use the or the composition was wrong whatever it is if you can look at a photograph that can be for landscape that could be for wedding and you <laughs> Do it to other people's photographs as well. Obviously, keep your opinions to yourself unless they're, unless they're being asked for. But learn how to see a bad photograph. Learn how to see a good photograph and ask yourself, why is it a good photograph? What makes it a good photograph? What makes it a bad photograph? What, what, what needed to have happened? Is the photograph obvious? Because when you look at street photography, the picture needs to be obvious. Okay, it needs to jump out of you. If I show some of my friends or family who have no interest in photography whatsoever, they need to be able to look at the photograph straight away and go, that's really cool. I like the way you've caught that. That light's really nice. The geometry is really nice. Love the reflection. Whatever it is, it needs to be obvious um, and not something that just you <laughs> like, if that makes any sense. But when you but when you when you go through images, though, ask yourself why you took the picture. So when you get back, don't be proud about it. If you've taken a crap photograph that's boring, it's got no point, it's got no structure, it's got no reason behind it. Literally, tell yourself it's a pointless image. Move on, delete whatever it is. Don't post it on social media. Don't feel like you have to post crap on social media just because everybody else posts crap on social media doesn't mean you have to. And it sets yourself a standard, and uh, things can only go up from there. But learn how to ask why you took the photograph and is it a good photograph? Is, is it, Sorry, is it a pointless image? Just work that out. Just get that in your head. On the same vein as that, learn how to critique. Honestly, it's so important. Now, if you're gonna go through other people's images, critiquing theirs, I've got a Facebook group, you're welcome to join. The whole point of that Facebook group is that people uh, put images on there and that they're welcome to critique. That's important. It has to be welcome to critique. If I look at somebody's photograph that I think, you know, it could be friends or whatever, and they've not asked for critique, I might say, don't like that, don't like that, that could have been better, but I would never say anything. But the important thing is to know how to critique. It really is important. My missus is really good at working out whether or not she can, you know, she can find fault in anything she bakes. She'll give it to me and I can't tell. There's a fault with it. I think it's perfect, but she can see the fault. She can taste the faults with it. And it's a really, really um, important asset to be able to do that. So definitely learn how to critique. I know it sounds stupidly obvious. Go through your old images. Doesn't matter what genre, street photography, landscape, doesn't matter what it is. Go through your images and work out what you like, what you don't like, how it can be improved. Is it a pointless photograph? But be honest don't don't be arrogant about it don't be proud don't be afraid to get things wrong it really will make you a better photographer in the long run i've got loads here right next one is uh master your camera so and it doesn't matter what camera you buy the reason these x100 things these little fuji things are so popular is because they are very very simple and you everything is there you don't need to go through menus you don't need to change lenses you haven't got different focal lengths to worry about you've got you know you can um, you don't even need to worry about autofocus on it. You can set it at what they call zone focus. So the the more you can take ownership of your camera, it, I mean, I've got a workshop coming up with a guy who isn't very confident with his camera, doesn't know what lens to use. Very common with workshops, people just don't know what lenses to use, what focal length to use. 
Um, but whatever you use, stick with it. Stick with that camera, stick with that make of camera, stick with that lens, stick with that focal length. Try and f try at best have um, go-to settings. Really master. This is where old film photographers who obviously had that forced restriction with forced ISO. You couldn't change ISO. You, you, add, you add basically what you add. Um, but it means you're not thinking about your camera so much, you're thinking about what's going on in front of you. So the expression set it and forget. So I can literally go out, put this to two meters, put it to F8, put it to a, a minimum shutter speed of whatever. I haven't got to think about missing focus. I haven't got to think about blurry images. I haven't got to think about depth of field because I can either go infinity, two meter, infinity, two meter. And all it means is that if I take a snap and I'm at the, the right focal length, if I'm at the right two meters or I'm at the right infinity or whatever I need to be, I'm just, I'm just there with my camera, I'm just enjoying it. I'm not thinking about the camera settings. And the more confidence you've got in owning your camera settings, the more confidence you've got in uh, knowing when you get back and look at your photographs, you don't think, oh, I, would, I hope that photograph's sharp, it was a really good photograph, I hope it wasn't blurry, I hope I've hope missed focus, you know, I hope I haven't overexposed it, I hope it's, not the, it's blurry because the shutter speed was whatever. Just take ownership and master your camera settings. I can't tell you how important it is. And uh, yeah, I sound like an old man there. Also, learn a histogram. But anyway, don't don't dig me on that. <laughs> right, I've mentioned, I did touch on this a second. The next one is a one lens setup. Now, this is a prime lens that doesn't zoom, so you physically have to move the camera forwards and backwards to get closer to something. This is a 35 mil equivalent field of view. It's a 23 mil on the Fuji. So this lens doesn't zoom. If you've got a kit lens, if you've bought your, your camera and it's come with a kit lens, you might be tempted to be standing there doing this all day. I don't know whether to zoom in and pick out details or whatever you're doing. If you've got a kit lens, if you've got a zoom lens, try and stick to the same focal length. Just leave it as it is. If it's if you want to walk around with it at its widest like that, at 18 mil on this Fuji, uh, if, you want to, if you want to walk around like that, it makes it more difficult, but if that's what you want to do, fine. But just keep it where it is. But keep the one lens set up, keep the focal length simple. Just master everything about the depth of field you can use, the, sh the slow shutter, sp the, the, the minimum shutter speed you can use, the, the type of photograph. It identify the weaknesses on a wide angle lens. You might have distortion. The buildings might might start to warp. It, it might push people away too far, forcing you to get close. Whatever it is, if you've got one lens and one camera body like this one, you can master it. You can literally master. There's nothing about this camera I don't know. I've been shooting professionally with a 35 mil for 20 years, but this camera at 35 mil, I can zone focus. I can. I, I know everything about it. I don't, I'm never going to make a mistake with this focal length of street photography, okay? The picture might be crap, <laughs> but technically I'm not going to make a mistake and it's so important to, uh, to, to master your camera. This might sound obvious, but do you even know what street photography is? Because a lot of people just think it's walking around the streets, taking photos of anybody, not on the streets necessarily, but anywhere on a, on a, on a, what's the word, a public space. If you're in a public space and you're taking photographs, yes, it's technically street photography, but if it's got no interest to it, then it might, might just be documentary photography. You might just be documenting the way of life at the time, which isn't street photography. Street photography has to be, have, have more than that, it has to have interest, it has to have point, it has to have, uh, have humour, has to have a story, it has to, I don't know, has to have an aesthetic. Um, but by books, I've got flipping loads of books. I've, I've half of them I've read, half of them I haven't even opened. <laughs> but buy loads of books. Find out what the earth street photography actually is. Because honestly, when you hit the streets, if you've done the research and you spent time, I don't mean watch YouTube videos because most of them haven't got a clue either. Myself in included. Sometimes you go out and you, you take photographs that, that you know they're not worth taking. But what I mean is, if you learn from the masters, look at a book. Pick up any book, and, what, and if you look through the pictures, you think, this is a master at street photography, I love this type of image. When you go out, you've got that inspiration, you've got that influence, you've, you've got that sort of, um, you're not just going out and spraying and praying and thinking, hopefully something will come out of it when I put all, my, all in black and white when I get back to Lightroom. If you leave the house with your camera ready, and you know, kind of like having a project, you kind of know what, you, what you're looking for, honestly, it's game changing research what street photography is. Don't go on Instagram, don't go on YouTube, but research what it is. Buy books, buy magazines, download my zine. <laughs> um, it, download my zine and see what, see what street photography are doing there. Um, but it is a massive way of learning, what, uh, of improving your photography because you actually, you actually hit the street knowing what you're talking about and what you're looking for.
that leads perfectly into, this is a pure coincidence, find your style. Now, I can't tell you how important this is because if you, again, go out and spray and pray and you come back and you don't like any of your own photographs, it might be that you don't like that style of street photography. It might be that you've followed somebody else on Instagram for years and you've always liked their work, but when you go out and try and emulate it, you can't do it because you're not looking for that type of photograph. You've got the wrong lens. You've got the wrong ID. You're not going out in the right light. So find your type of street photography. Find what you like. It might be that you've got no cat and house chance of being able to take that photograph. It might be like, oh, flipping egg. I love um, this style of, of, of geometry or fine art or abstract or just the way that he always sees funny or interesting. He always finds comedy. He always Whatever it is. Have that in your head. So when you're going out, it might happen once a month, it might happen once a year, but if you know what you like, it's so important. It really is so important. You've got far more chance of actually appreciating you know, any of your own work if you come back and you look through the images and go, finally, I've got somebody doing this, or I've got whatever it is you like. Um, really, really important. Quick commercial break, just to mention, as I just have my scene, I can't do these videos anymore um, if I don't have some, um, you guys supporting me and um, and downloading my zines. So jump, jump over, I do online workshops. I've got my digital zine, which is on, there's two zines, which are mine, and a special guest, so there's three zines. My issue three should be coming out next month as well. Fingers crossed, if I've taken enough pictures uh, to make one. Um, but yeah, if you want to, if you want, even if it's just like an online Skype going through you improving your or familiarizing you. I did this the other day. I had a guy ask me, he didn't know how to use his camera. So we went through and we actually set up his camera and he mastered his camera online while he was in a different country. So we went through and mastered his camera online. But if you, if you do download the zine or if you do join one of these online workshops, um, it's massive support for the channel and I can keep putting out content like this. So if you get anything from this video today, that's one way you can help me. Huge, huge, huge ability is to have your camera ready. And when you're walking around the streets, if you see something interesting, it's not a case of, oh, zoom out, switch the camera on, shutter speed, aperture should be about there, focus now. You've, you've missed the moment. A huge, huge um, skill. And I tried this, no memory card. No memory card, being ready, no memory card. That's a freaking example of being ready. Um, so there's no memory card in the camera, so I can't take a picture. Um, but the other day I was walking around up and down Oxford Street and I had the camera pretty much to my chin. I was pretending to be on the phone. I was talking to you guys. I was on YouTube, whatever. And people weren't really bothered. I just had the camera around like this. But if anybody interesting walked past, I was pre-focused at a meter and a half or a meter. Was it a meter? I think it was pre-focused at a meter, F11, bright sunlight. And the people walking past me and I was literally like that. Anybody happened to be in front of me, bang. I was literally ready. B -b 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 snapping away. So I managed to walk past going duh, 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 just getting all these nice cool shots. But I was ready. The camera was wasn't going to try and focus. The shutter speed was dialed in. Everything was uh, was ready. The focus was bang on where I needed it to be. Nothing was left down to chance. So yeah, that meant that I could no matter what style of street photography you're going to do, you need to master your camera and have it ready. So if something interesting happens in front of you or that right person walks through that right piece of light whichever you've been waiting for, bang. Got them. I keep going on about this, but you need to know how and when to zone focus. Now, if you own a Fuji, so if you own a Fuji and you've seen that box on the back, can you see that? That with all the squares in it. That with the square, and uh, it's called zone on the. It's called zone on on there, right? That is not zone focusing. Or just that is called zone focus in a Fuji, but it's not zone focusing. Zone focusing is where you choose either infinity, one meter, whatever it is, and you lock your focus zone in front of the camera. That's what zone focusing is. So you need to know when to use that. Honestly, it's the most powerful thing you will ever learn um, when mastering your camera, when, when trying to improve your street photography. It's so, so important. Know when to, when your camera, if you're one of these Sony shooters that shoots everything at 1.8 or 1.4 because you're obsessed with background blurs, then you're not going to be able to do this. But if you want to actually capture context, depth of field, storytelling, whatever, zone focus is going to be immensely important. I couldn't be without it. It's how they always used to shoot uh, in the old days of film. Um, and obviously, the wider the the wider the field of view, like it's easier to do it on that lens than it is on on a third, on a fifty mil equivalent. So, but know and know when to zone focus. Honestly, game changer. Cliche, right? Get closer.
I know it's a cliche. Everybody says it. Uh, fill the frame with what you like. Now, I like that one because if you're t showing people pictures and they say, what's it a picture of? Oh, that thing over there in the far right-hand corner. I really like that sign and it's like that big in a picture this big. It's not going to make sense, is it? So you fill the frame with what you like, even if it's sometimes too much. If you take a photo and you're too close up to something, at least you're filling the frame with what you like. It's better than being too far away. Um, but move closer. A, a good way of doing that, forcing yourself to do it, is either buy a wide angle prime lens or to get your kit lens and leave it on 18 mil or whatever your um, whatever your camera will let you do. So if you've got a wide lens, you've got no choice. You have to get closer. But by getting closer to something, you're forcing the viewer to look more deep, uh, deeper into the image. You 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 feel more part of the photograph. It's not like it's just a picture of a scene. If you're right in front of, if you're right in the thick of it. It's, um, it's, it's dramatically different. You feel like you're there. And that wide angle really, really helps that. And it's a massive, it adds a totally different dynamic to, to a photograph. You can imagine a further back version of the same photograph. When you look at um, like crowds photographs and protests and stuff, when you get the camera really close to these people, it feels like you're there. You feel the energy, you feel the passion. And it just means that when people look at the photograph, there's more impact. And uh, yeah, that's a huge, huge asset as well. Got this down here twice. Buy books, research different types of image. We've already said that, but it's dead important, so I'm gonna say it again. If you haven't got any street photography books, don't have to go out and buy millions of them like I've done. You don't have to, you just buy one or two, and they don't have to be expensive, and they don't have to be anything posh. Just get some books, have a look at them, find out what you like, and uh, yeah, at least then you've got some sort of structure and some sort of education, I suppose. That sounds patronizing, doesn't it, yeah. Oh, this one isn't in there twice, but I've already I've already said it once. Anyway, ask yourself, is it interesting? If you see anybody else's street photographs, or even if it's landscape photographs, you can see why they've taken the photograph. You can see whether it's a leading line, whether it's whatever the point is, if it's balanced or whatever. So with street photography, you, you, you need to be able to see it an interesting photograph. If it's a if, if it's a photograph that's just somebody sitting on a bench or just somebody walking down the street, just somebody walking down an alleyway, or they're not wearing interesting attire, or they're not in, you know, there has to be something to it. There has to be a point to it. But you, the quicker you can go through images from now on, if it's your own or anybody else's, if the quicker you can learn how to go through photographs to say, pointless photograph, next, pointless photograph, next, oh no, I like that, I see why he's taking it. The quicker you can learn how to see a pointless image, the better you'll become, because as you're taking photographs, you'll be standing there with the camera going, this is pointless, I don't even know why I'm taking this photograph, it's just a bloke sitting on a bench. There's no nice light, there's no. There's nothing funny about it, there's no structure to it, there's nothing, it's not like a photograph that can't be re repeated, if that makes sense. So you'll, you'll be taking a photograph and you think, this is pointless, and walk away from it, so it's a really, really good, a good thing to pick up. We'll keep that in. Shoot a lot, put the miles in. I thought I'd always said this as well, but um, you've got to, you really have. It is annoyingly uh, accurate to say that street photography is not coming overnight. It, you, you you absolutely cannot go out and hit the streets and after even two hours. I mean, I, every time I hit London, I'm, I'm there all day. We walk, probably walk 12 miles on average every time I walk. I mean, it's not selling workshops that in, is it? <laughs> but you do walk a lot, and the more miles and the more time you can put in, the more mistakes you'll make, crucially, the more potential things you'll see. It, shoot at night, shoot in the day, shoot in the same place at different times of the year, but you've got to put the miles in. There's no way around it. it is, it's one of the best parts about street photography. If you can just do it because you enjoy the actual process of going out on the streets, walk around having a laugh with your camera, um, you know, with, with, if it's a social thing with friends or if it's on your own, you just like walking around with headphones on, whatever it is, the more miles you can put in, seriously, the better you will be. But again, that means nothing because you could do that for 10 years, come back every single time, look at all your pictures, think every single one of them's chocolate, and then you polish the shit out of them, put them on social media with some crap preset, and then you can't see you can't see all the um, all the faults with them. So yeah, if, if you're going to do that, you need to learn that again, as I said, come back and filter the crap out of them. Just aim for one image, aim for one photograph. Every time you go out and you take 10 million photographs, come back with one. That's all you want, just one. How to edit, don't rely on the edit. Right, okay, very, very important. I see so many 
adverts for presets on Instagram and whatnot. And the picture, as a professional photographer, I, it's my job to take a photograph that I can I can justify the photograph as I'm taking it. it I don't need to take a photograph and think, this will be amazing once I put all my presets on it. It has to sell as a raw photograph for me, otherwise I can't, I can't use it. So if I can't come back and just try and polish it later because that's not professional. You need to end. You need to start with a good image, you know. So one of the things I love about Fuji is I literally just put classic chrome on them and don't really do any editing. And now I see so many people that take crap images and all they do is shift the white balance, selective color, you change all the hues and all this sort of thing. If it's a crap photograph, accept it as a crap photograph. I'm not going to tell you that you that it's okay just to stick over produced, is that the right word, over generated, I don't know, whatever but profiles that are just going to completely change a raw photograph, because you will see through them, you'll see that is a shit photograph, yeah the colour edit, the grading, all that fancy colour work might be really really nice, it might make the photograph really aesthetic, but it's still a shit picture underneath, you can see that, so yeah definitely don't don't shoot for thinking that it will look good as soon as I polish it with my with my presets pack, if that makes any sense. Sorry to sound dis discouraging on that, but it, do, it does annoy me when I see shit pictures that people have just turned everything teal or whatever like that, but yeah, you get the point. Now, on that, on that vein as well, um, I'm going to leave on this one, right? If it's shite, don't turn it black and white, right? End of story. If it's shite, it's shite. Right, if it's a crap, if it's a crap picture, it doesn't mean that it's going to be better when it's in black and white. And, and on that, if you're going to shoot black and white, friggin' shoot black and white. Right, go out with, to put your camera in black and white mode. Put your camera in black and white mode and shoot. If you think you're going to shoot, end up with a black and white image. That is the best way of doing it. If you get back and it ends up being alright in colour, great. But shoot in black and white. But don't be one of these people that literally drops the highlights, lift the shadows. If it's a crap photograph, just by spending 20 minutes or 30 minutes polishing the hell out of it, turning it black and white in, in, in Lightroom is going to save it. If it's a crap photograph, accept it as a crap photograph. Don't just turn it black and white if it's shite. Right? Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. I really enjoyed putting this one together, actually. And uh, yeah, every single one of these things I've told you about is a mistake I've made myself. So don't think I'm patronising. It's not supposed to come across as patronising. It's supposed to come across as literally mistakes I've made. I promise you, every single one of them, I can relate to myself, seriously. So do 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 take it as me giving you my uh, my... Uh, five years worth of experiences in 20 minutes right? <laughs> if it ends up being that but yeah do jump over check out the magazine check out uh, my um, workshops I'm going to add a new facility to the website where we can arrange dates so like eight or ten people eight people can turn up and do a, a group workshop so look out for that but do check out the website check out my street photography on there there's a few more that need to go on but you go through and I'm giving you permission now go through and critique the crap out of my photographs on my website I've got none on Instagram I hate Instagram don't do Instagram uh, I do lives on Instagram, so follow me for Instagram lives. Um, but do check out my website and look at my photographs. I'm giving you full, full um, creative critique license to rip the shit out of my photographs and give me feedback. Buy the zine and do it that way and help the channel at the same time. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching. I <laughs> hope, you, hope you took something from it. See you soon.